Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Showcase, another white glove showcase. We did the first white glove showcase was Bugatti's, what, a few days ago? And I'm going to keep on doing them because this allows me to pull cars from the collection and figure out themes. And the theme today, Hot Wheels Convention. I've pulled out my favorite convention models from the two events that happen each year, Hot Wheels Nationals, which always happens in the spring, first week in April, typically. It was in Columbus, Ohio this year, and then Hot, the Hot Wheels Convention, which is always in LA, in the fall, first week in October, and that's where we're at. So collectors are descending on Los Angeles on the LAX Marriott for this week. I'll be there Wednesday, and uh, I thought in order to get us all ready for those that are going to be attending and those that are just going to be watching the festivities from afar, which you definitely should and you can here on the Lamley channel, um, we're going to be having some fun. So... I thought we'd prepare by showing my favorite models. In fact, I'll do the top, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine models, my top nine models from the Hot Wheels conventions in the past. Done this before, can't even remember what I picked, so I always do it fresh and you guys can see because there's obviously some new entries as well. Couple of things, well, let's get started. I'm actually gonna start showing you the model starting with this Mustang. I'm not gonna give you a ton of details. You can look them up from where these are from before the top nine. Just showing the models that I considered. I have all. I have a lot of convention models, but I don't have all of them. Um, but in the collection that I have, these are the models that I considered for my top 10. So they're all models that I really like and they just fell a little bit short this time. Doesn't mean they won't be in the top 10 next time. But while I'm doing this, while I'm showing off these models, I thought I would kind of give you some ideas. A couple of things. First thing I will announce to you is that we're gonna be doing like we did at the Nationals, another what not giveaway. You guys love that I gave all the convention models away, the Nationals models away. Last time I did a live stream from Columbus, Ohio. I'm gonna do it again this Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. There is a link down below in the description and I'll put it in the comments um, for that show. I'm gonna be giving away all of the convention models, even those that haven't been unveiled yet. I know they've been leaked, but we're gonna stay true to, uh, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, we're going to stay true to the unveiling schedule, but I will, all of those five models I'm going to be giving away. And for those of you who can't attend the convention, uh, that's your chance to win them. You just have to sign up for what not using the link below and bookmark the show so you can be watching because you got to be watching in order to win. Um, the whatnot folks, I think, are going to use that to spearhead a bunch of shows from the convention. I know a lot of collectors will be out there and a lot of uh, whatnot sellers will be out there, so you'll definitely want to be part of that. The other thing that I'll tell you right now while I'm showing off these models is that I will, as usual, be streaming the finale on Saturday night. I usually schedule it for 7 o'clock Pacific time, but it could happen a little earlier, it could happen a little later. Just have to be patient because... It goes on the schedule of the show, and I sometimes see some of you complain, get on with it. It's like, no, you're not there. You have no way of dictating when they get started on the Mattel finale where they show all the sneak peeks for the upcoming. This will be obviously 2024. Um, they'll go when they go. They give out awards first. They do a bunch of announcements. They do a lot of, you know, do a lot of thanking of people that have worked on the convention, and then they move to Mattel. And when that Mattel... Uh, presentation starts, I will start streaming, but it is already scheduled. So you can go onto the YouTube channel, which you're watching right now and bookmark that. So you don't miss it. I'll try and keep you updated. I'll, you know, if it's like seven o'clock and we're not even close to starting, I'll tell you, uh, if it's a little early, I'll try and keep you up, but you just want to, you want to bookmark it. Cause that way you'll get notification of, um, when it's starting and then you can be watching. So you don't have to just sit there and wait. So that's definitely something you'll want to do. All right. Just a couple more models that I considered, and I know some of these from Nationals, some of these from the convention. I thought I would tell you how these models are selected. All of these are Mattel, made by Mattel models. They're usually done premium. The one I'm showing right now, this gold uh, gasser, is done in Spectre Flame, but they're typically not done in Spectre Flame. It's uh, always there's always a different theme. There's always they kind of they usually kind of let the Mattel designers have their fun with these, but. It should be known that while these are Mattel produced, these models are selected by Mark and Jennifer and their staff at the convention. This is something the, the Hot Wheels convention and nationals are an event that Mattel supports, but it's not their event. They support it with these models. They bring designers out. It's, it's obviously a convention that they utilize as one of their official, like as one of their official events, but 
It's put on by Mark and Jennifer and their staff. They're the ones who choose the models. Mattel gives them a list of premium casting, sometimes RLC, sometimes just premium. And they choose which models they want and give an idea of maybe the deco they want. They usually sometimes will inquire with people like, what do people want to see? What models are popular these days? What are some designs that maybe we could go for? And, um, and that's how they're chosen. So now the pink models, those are done by Mattel. Mattel chooses those. And the dinner model, which is usually honoring some a designer or someone else. It was Jimmy Lou last time. It'll be, Phil, it'll be Phil Realman, the designer this time. They get to choose a model, and um, but they'll choose it, and they'll it will actually be funded by the convention staff. This is one of the reasons that when you see, you know, it's one thing for Mattel models to that are coming out like RLC, Premium, Basics to get leaked by people. It sucks, but it's something that happens. But I'm particularly perturbed. This is why I've said this in the past. I get particularly perturbed when convention models get leaked because it's not Mattel that you're taking these from. You're actually taking them from Mark and Jennifer who use the money they earn in these conventions to fund the models. And it really should be their time and their ability. There should be their choices when these models get unveiled. So when they get leaked, I never show them. I never share them. I know people send them to me. I don't want to see them. Um, and it's something that if you're watching this, don't encourage people to, if they even get images of the upcoming, if someone else does it, it's their problem. But support, this is like, this. these models legitimately represent a small business. I know they're done by Mattel, but this convention happens only with the support of Mark and Jennifer and the countless hours that they work on to put these on. And so it's always really important, and I always want to make it known that these models are chosen by them, funded by them. Uh, Mattel reserves the uh, SKUs for them, but um, but ultimately these are their models. And so leaking them is just not cool. All right, so just wanted to let you know how that works. These are truly Mattel produced, but funded by Mark and Jennifer and their staff. So, and they're, jo they're always super cool. They kind of let Mattel have some fun with them. The designers have fun with the, with the dinner models. And that's why we end up with such cool creative models. These are the ones I consider for the top nine. We're not going to put them in the top nine. So I'm going to clear this out and we're going to walk through the top nine models starting now. All right. If you were paying attention while I was showing those models, there were some that I know I put in my top uh, 10 before. I'm just going top nine because I don't know why not. Um, like the Gold Gasser, like uh, the Rio Asada S2000, uh, the 240Z in plain white. These are all models that I've really liked. I still do love them a ton, but they're, but what I'll do is look at my displays of convention models and just go, which ones do I like the best? And I pick them out and those are the lists I'm going to go with. That's why it's probably constantly changing. I'll do this again six months from now or a year from now, and it'll be different again. But I know there's some that I've shown before. I'm going to try and do these in order from the ninth, my ninth favorite right now to my first favorite. And there is a new number one, that's for sure. I know I've featured this one, but here's my number nine. This one, I, I'm i going to forget what uh, what events these are from. Sometimes I'll know it's from either nationals or the convention, but sometimes it's hard to remember what year. I think this one came with the yellow skyline. You'll see that in a minute, the R34. But um, this is the custom, the 62 Chevy custom uh, pickup. Custom 62 Chevy, I think, is the official name. Casting that, I think, is gaining more and more popularity as we go. I think it's starting. It's not at the Silverado level yet, the square body. But you can kind of see it starting to gain, especially in premium. In basic, it's been ruined, um, in my opinion. Uh, just the way the surfboard has been molded into the back. They put a sunroof on it. This thing just has the proper stance, the proper look. And there's so many good versions, including in pop culture. But this one uh, from the convention, is I, I don't see it leaving the list. It's just so, so cool. That's number nine. Number eight. Just making sure. I miscounted the Bugattis last time, if you guys remember. So I'm going to make sure I get this right. New entry. New one to the list. This is from about a year ago. I think, or maybe a year and a half ago. This one was from, I think, the Charlotte. I might have that wrong. This is the Dodge Charger. Um, 1969, right? Dodge Charger. RT. Telephone. This one actually is the one that was just an RLC in, in Spectre Flame Yellow, right? It was just uh, sold. But I just like this one just because the Charger just, it's just a cool casting. 
this is kind of you know this is this is Brendan Vitusky's take on a, the casting that's been in kind of muscle mania for years in basic, but he's got the Heliphant uh, engine in it, and we've seen it kind of in more modernized look. But now we're starting to see it, you know, into kind of some classic muscle looks. And this one is in a very pure, you know, just exactly how the Dodge Charger would look. Maybe the maybe the rims are a little updated, but just a really, really good looking model. I tried to think what my theme would be for these models because it's, um, you know, sometimes I like the really realistic kind of, I don't want to say plain, but clean versions of these models. But then I see something that's super creative as well, and that's the number seven model. This, it doesn't, I think that we're more into like realism and really good looking cars with my top nine, but there are some exceptions and this is definitely one of them. Dutch Courage, this was Steve Vandervate's model. This is one of those models that the dinner never happened because this was released during COVID. There were a couple of conventions, at least, at least two that only happened virtually uh, because of COVID. I mean, there was the April event and then the, uh, the fall event, both didn't happen in 2020. And this was one that was made to honor Steve Vandervate. In fact, he designed it with this uh, Dutch porcelain look and uh, and created this just really cool, unique design for his dinner model for the dinner that never happened, the one that was honoring him. Um, but those who bought the tickets still got them. They were just distributed, obviously. They were just mailed to those that were going to attend. And uh, And this one I always thought was just super creative. It's one of the most creative gassers that has been done just in that design. And I think it works really, really well. All right, that's nine, eight, seven. Here's number six. Another new entry from, came out in Columbus and it was the dinner model. And what a model it is. The model honoring Jimmy Lou. The S15 is one of his favorite castings. He actually had a hand in designing it. At the time, I think his oldest, his oldest kid, Will, was a very young, young baby at the time. So he put, if you look at it real closely, um, hard to tell here, but he put a car seat in the back seat of this car. He owns one himself, an S15. And um, he also is a sucker for camouflage. So he combined two of his favorite things and turned it into this fantastic S15. I love how they've done the uh, axles in red, the wa the wheels in black. It's just a really cool, unique design. I, I you know, I there was some confusion into the... Uh, because of the camouflage, but those dinner models are kind of like designer's chance to just do whatever they want. And this one is one of those that I really like. Okay. Another one from a year ago, the convention a year ago that I just love, and it is the Camaro, the 69 Camaro. It's the pro stock Camaro, right? The official title 69 Chevy Camaro SS. This one, like the Charger, can have a very modern look if it wants, but you know, in this pro stock style, but it can also have more of a classic. And this one has it. I just love the brush metal look on this one. Modern rims, of course, in the low profile, but it can go, you know, we've seen it in RLC kind of go more of that classic muscle. This is kind of a hybrid with the color, but I love the two tone with the black roof and then the racing stripes on it. Just a beautiful model. Convention or not, it's just a stunner. Very much in the same, kind of in the same vein as the uh, as the Charger model that I really like. All right. This one is an iconic one. There are some there are some models that have gained into like the very, very high level pricing. I think the most valuable convention model, at least from the two conventions, there's some from like the Japanese conventions that are pretty high. But I think the gold Batmobile is still the king of expensive convention models. I think. I haven't really checked. I'd have to go look at some of the aftermarket prices, but this one is up there now too. It's the R34 Skyline. Came out the same time as the Custom 62 Chevy. It was the first version of the RLC model with the opening hood and the brake calipers detailed behind the wheel. You know, we saw the blue version and the purple version come out, a few others, but this has retained an incredible amount of value. I think it is approaching. I think I've seen it go anywhere from like $500 to $800, maybe depending on the number. Um, but it's also just really good looking in the bright yellow. It's super, super clean. Uh, one of the first like models where we saw the convention folk remove the logo and just go with just kind of a minimal information, throwing it on the spoiler here, which I really like. You know, if I could compare after you've seen it on the turntable... Like, I'll just give you an example here. Here's Rio Asada's uh, S2000, and it's great, but it is a little, just that 
logo is a little distracting on the hood. And so what they started doing later, instead of just putting the logo on it, especially on these more clean versions, maybe on like a race car they can do it, they just put it there on the spoiler. Just details, no logo. And that ends up being just a fantastic model, convention model or not. So there is the Skyline. Okay, top three. Two that have been there before and then a new entry. This one I've shown before. This one is along the lines of the Gasser, just something that's just unique, beautiful. There's that same logo that I showed you on the Rio Sada, but it's the gold 67 Camaro. This one got Spectre Flame paint. I think that's considered Spectre Flame paint. And it just, there's just something about this one that's special. It's the gold color. It's the chrome rims. It's the Goodyear tires. It's the minimal racing, but kind of appropriate kind of racing deco on it with the logos and everything else. It's just a beautiful, beautiful car and a very collectible car. I know this one has kind of taken on a life of its own. Um, like many of the convention models have, that one definitely is one that's uh, that remains very, very popular. And it's just... It's there because it is an iconic casting. I don't tend to get too nostalgic with a lot of these models, but uh, I really do like that one. Um, and I just like the execution of it. Final two, both very clean. This one I think is just a legendary model. It's from Columbus as well, right? So the same time that the Dodge Charger came out. And I still think the color the wheels, everything. This is a perfect execution execution of this casting, whether or not it's convention or not. It is Julian Coyle's dinner model. It is the Fox body Mustang done in classic Ford Teal. 1993 Ford Mustang Cobra R is the official name. I love the 10 spokes on this. I love the color. The color is what really makes this one shine. We've seen some really good versions in RLC, I think two at least. But this one is just so beautiful. Same thing, it's got just the just a, a small amount of details from the convention from Nationals on the spoiler. Everything else is just super, super clean. I can open the, the uh, hoods on these. I'm not going to. If you want to, I can show it later. But, um, but I think that one is cool. That was my number one last time, I believe, when I did this last. But we got a new number one. I wonder if you guys, some of you have probably figured out which one it is. And uh, since since it came out at the last event, dog's angry. Um, you figured it out? Also very, very clean. Super, super good looking. And it's my, the best, to me, it's the best convention model released so far. Did you guess the Porsche? I hope you did. This was the finale model at the last Nationals convention in Columbus, Ohio. Done in clean, clean black. A little, a small Hot Wheels logo and Porsche logo on the sides. The modern Fuchs wheels in kind of a copper color, which just, just stands out with that black background. And then just clean details. You can see as it goes around on the turntable, you can see the convention details are just done on the back bumper, nice and small. And then these wheels are just, I, it, the wheels make it, obviously the black makes it, but this is a casting that is, was released cyberpunk, right, in pop culture. And then we're seeing it released in Boulevard. I actually have it with me, but I'll do it in the Boulevard feature uh, that I'll do soon. Uh, but in between is this convention model that, convention or not, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if there will be a better version than this one. And I think it's become highly, highly collectible uh, among collectors convention or not there you go we've got four or five more models i didn't do the pinks because those are the rlc i just did the convention models but we've got some good ones coming that have been uh, announced we've got some good ones coming that have not been announced i'm sure that some of them might break into this top nine that i did today and uh and we'll do that again when we uh when we do the next feature, but you guys tell me what you think. Let me know if you're going to be at the convention. Definitely join me on whatnot on Friday and definitely join me Saturday night from the finale uh, for that live stream. So you can see what's coming in 2024. I know they've got a few things planned to show you guys. Tell me what you think. Thank you, everybody. Bye.